YouTube, I'm MPC, and today I'm finally making another Retro Games video. Today, the game that we're going to be cover covering is Snake. So now for the history of Snake. It's a little bit difficult to find, pinpoint the um, origin of Snake because it wasn't just one game. It's like developed over the years. But the first time you had like something that was from that genre was in a game called Blockade, which made by Gremlin Industries in 1976. This was an arcade game, and this was a two-player game, there was no, no AI whatsoever, and the goal of the game was to trap the other player. Later after that, they made a game called Hustle, which um, incorporates AI, and is a lot like Snake, only you do not grow. Instead, it, as, um, as you get our points, you move faster. So, th this, this um, idea took a lot of popularity. Later, in 1977, Surround was created by Atari and it was one of the nine launch titles. Another year later, a programmer named Peter Trefonis created a, a PC version of, of, of the Gremlin Industries games he, and called it Warm. He made it for the TRS-80, Commodore Pet, and Apple II. This was the first PC version of the game. So now later, someone by the name of Michael Toy created another game that, that's it's also called Warm, but I don't think, I'm not sure whether it has um, a connection to the previous one. This is the first version that had the growth factors. And then later in 1982, there's another game created, it was called Tron. This was made, um, especially for the Disney movie, Tron basically oh, copied the blockade and revived it. In 1990, at this point, um, this snake concept is a pretty well-known thing in a lot of um, companies are using it. For instance, Nibbles, which was a snake type game, was a Q-based example code in 1990. And there's a game called Rattler Race, which Windows had in its game pack in 1991. Basically, the revolution of snake, the thing that we all know as snake, was created in 1997 for Nokia phones. The, the Nokia thing really boosts the popularity of snake, so it's been used in a lot of mini games, like in the Time Splitters 2, they, they had a game called Anaconda as a mini game. The thing I was different about Anaconda is that they, it was the first snake game to use the analog stick, so you can go in 36 different directions. Even right now, as you're watching this video, you, you can play Snake on YouTube by holding in the left button for two seconds and then pressing up. You can just play Snake on YouTube. So that's all for the history of Snake. Alright, so now let's get into uh, the tutorial. So, first one new is three sprites. So, this great sprite called the first one SBR Snake. This would be one block of the snake, and what we're going to do is we're going to make it 16 by 16 pixels to give it a little more of a, like, the original look. And just make a simple green square. And we're going to leave out the, the sides to, to add to the, the look. So now I'm going to duplicate that, and we're going to call the next one SPR Food. This will be the thing that the snake eats up to add gain points, or gain length. And we're gonna make this one yellow. Now for the third part, we're gonna make the walls, and we're gonna call that one SPR Solid. This one's also gonna be 16 by 16. And it's going to be completely black. All right, now let's create our first object. First object we're gonna create is OBJ head. This is the like the head of the snake that we're gonna be controlling. So we give it the SPR snake sprite, I'm going to create instrument, and I'm just going to take create two global variables, these are going to be used by our tail when we create it later. So we'll call it global.length equals 3, because this is how long we want to snake in the beginning. And now we got another one, we call it global.step.time, and set that equal to 5, that's a nice time. And, um, So in this case, it's five, and, uh, and um, the other game set to 30 steps in a second, so it'll move six times every second. And this is when we set alarm zero equals global dot step time. So if you decrease the step time, then the snake moves quicker, that's just the way it works. And in alarm zero, we'll take care of all the move movement and stuff like that. So now I've got two local variables I want to make, call it dire future. Equal zero and dire actual. Also equal zero. One thing to note about dire zero is right, one is up, two is left, 
street is down. And there's no way of, way of reason to this, I just ha had to think of something, so that's the way I did it. Okay. And the dire future is the one that you're gonna, is the direction you're gonna, you're gonna have next time this alarm goes off, and dire actual is the direction you're currently going. This now is probably gonna be alarm. First off, we want to create a tail before we move. We haven't created this object yet, but we'll create it in a second. This will be like everything that's not the head of the snake, it's going to be the tail. So we want to make sure that when the head moves, we want there to be a tail to lead up behind it. So if we have it set that the future direction will be zero, or moving to the right, then we want the dire actual to equal zero. And we also want x plus equals 16, because 16 is the size of each block in the game way I set it up. So now we're going to copy this three more times. for each of the four directions. So these just change respectively. And that one is up, so that'll be Y minus. Two is down is left, so that'll be X minus. And three is down, so that would be Y plus. Alright, all set. Now last thing you want to do here is reset the alarm to make sure that this keeps going on and on. So alarm Zero equals global dot step time. Now we're gonna set up the setting the dire variables under the with the arrow keys. So go into step event. And so if I just clicked in, we want dire future to equal zero, and we'll copy this three times. and change their cycle respectively. So if you're going to the right, set the dire to the right, if you're going up, set the dire to the up, and so on and so on and so on. Now there's one more thing I want to make sure that we check right now. When we're playing snake, let's say you move to the right, and hit the left arrow key. We don't want it to go directly back, because that'll cause you to die, because you collide your tail, and it just looks weird. So the way we're going to fix that is, we're going to say, and dire actual, does not equal 2, which is the opposite direction for this. So we're going to copy this piece of code and put it in for each one. And we're going to put the number in as the opposite of this one. So for this one, it'll be 3. For this one, it'll be 0. And for this one, it'll be 1. All right. Now let's create the tail. Call OBJ tail. Get the SPR snake. The creation event. All right, or this particular tail object is going to stay until it reaches the end of the tail. And once we reach the end of the tail, we want alarm to go off and for it to be destroyed. So alarm zero equals, as it, once alarm zero goes off, it'll be destroyed. So first we want the amount of time it takes for it to move once, that's step time. And we're going to multiply that by how many times the, we want the sink to move before this one gets destroyed. And in this case, Remember we set a global dot length to three up there, so we can multiply it by. So if step time this step time equals five and global dot length equals three, so in this case it would it would stay um, three steps. But length it includes the head, so we're gonna subtract by one. I hope that makes sense. So in alarm zero, we're gonna do inch, inch destroy. All right, so now let's create a room. I'm going to make it smaller because our sprites are so small. And just going to put in the head, and we should be good. And one more thing, I'm going to double the size of the window because the room's so small. Alright, so the first step is finished. Now the snake should be moving around perfectly. There we have it. So right now it stays um, at 3 long, but moves fine with the arrow keys. <laughs> this one's probably the most tricky part to understand, so. You got this far, you're doing good. Alright, now the next part. Now we're going to program it to, to die when, um, go at length. Go the wall. First make the wall, which is solid, solid. And then I'm going to create another object and call it OBJ snake. This is going to be representative of both the tail and the head. And in order to do that, we're going to make the parent of both of them the OBJ snake. Alright. So an OBJ head, when we collide with OBJ solid, 
we want the game to restart. And we'll duplicate that. Oh, sorry. Boom, we with Obi oh, Snake. Alright, that's that's really all for that. So now we're gonna create another object. Now we're gonna cover how to do the food things. Now call OBJ food. In the creation event. First off we're gonna create a variable that says spawn it's called spawn or it's equal to false. What this variable will do is it's gonna define whether it's um ready to be eaten, let's say. So if um we're gonna come up with the code to, to make this randomize its position, and if it lands on top of solid, that's not good because the player won't be able to get to it. And if it lands on top of the player, then that's three points we don't want that either. So later we'll be when it's first randomized, we'll have spawn equals false, and then we'll have something to check whether it's on top of one of those two things, and then we'll set spawn equals to true, equal to true, and then we'll only gain points if spawn equals true. Okay. Now for the randomization code. So have down x equals random room width and y equals random okay now another thing we want to do is we want to align to the to um the 16 by 16 grid that we set up so there are many ways to do this but the way i'm going to do it is like so all right i use modulus um let me give a brief ex explanation of how modulus works. If we have 15 mod 6, still take fit 6, fit six into 15 as many times as possible, and then it will get return what's left over. So in this case it will be 3 because 6 will fit into 15 twice and then what's left over is 3. Another example, 17 mod 8. 8 fits into 17 twice, what's left over is 1, so it turns 1. And then let's see, 21 mod uh, 5. This will also return 1 because 5 will fit in 21 four, ti four times and then 1's left over. Alright, that's how it works. So by doing this, x mod 16, this will subtract the little bit that's off center, let's say. And we'll do the same thing for the y. So this entire thing is the random stating code. Now we're in code for a collision event with. OBJ solid. Since it doesn't move when you when um since this object doesn't move at all, and solids move at all, then the only possibility for this to happen is if it spawns directly onto there. So I guess just want to re-randomize. Then we'll add collision event with OBJ snake. This could either be because you spawn on top of it or because the snake collided with you. So we'll we'll be using the re-randomization code either way. But if spawn equals true then we want it also to add one to global dot length now we gotta make sure that now we gotta take out the spawn variable in set event so if at any point you're not colliding with the solid of the snake then you're where we want it to be, and spawn equals true. Alright, now I gotta add that to the game. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't set this, but I'll do that in a second. And also gotta outline the room as solids. And let's set this right. Alright, now it should be done. Let's test it. Alright, so it restarts every time I hit the wall, and the food respawns as well. The movement's still working fine. And when I get the food, I grow longer each time. I like the way that this works because it's a very smooth transition in um, length. You barely notice that it's growing, but it's definitely growing. Now let's test. If I hit myself, then it restarts as well. Alright, so that's all for this tutorial. I hope you got something out of it and it's not too confusing. But this one is now off the list. There we go. And if you have any other suggestions for tutorials I might make, then please by all means suggest them. I'll get them done as soon as I can, and uh, so yeah, thanks for watching, God bless you.